AI is hungry. So there was an article in our sister publication, AIDaily.us, AIDaily.us, which is breaking news in AI curated by humans. And I have to correct somebody. So I posted something about this on X. And somebody said, jumped, in, jumped down their throat and said, Oh my God, don't get your news from AI. It's completely wrong. And I'd just like to clarify that it is not AI, it's not news generated by AI. It is AI, it's news about AI, but it's curated by humans. A human team here does that. It's curated by human beings, but then it is summarized and read by AI. So no, humans are always in the mix. And this is one of the things I want to try and emphasize for a lot of people is that because there's so many people out there who are just generating crap with AI and expecting it to sell and expecting it to be of quality, you need a human in the mix. There has to be a combination of human AI and AI. Somebody came up with the term digital centaur, but I hate that. I came up with the term humai to see if that would stick, but we'll see, we'll see. Humans must always be in the mix somewhere, whether they're approving or they're creating the initial seed nugget of information, a human must always be part of that process. But that's not what I wanted to talk about today. What did I want to talk about today? Oh yeah, <laughs> how AI is hungry. It's very, very hungry. And what do you think it's hungry for, folks? It's hungry for data, for it's absolutely hungry for data because the more data that goes into the large language model, model, the better the model will be because it's got more and more human generated data in it that it can choose from in order to create what it's creating, right? Because in some cases, if large language model isn't large enough, there's plenty of things it does not know how to do. You can go off to the edges and it will tell you, I can't do that. or it'll hit a guardrail. I mean, that's probably more likely that it's going to hit some kind of guardrail. So if you ask it a question that the people who run the chatbot don't want you to hear, like, for example, hey, create an image of President Trump doing X, Y, Z. Oh, I can't do that because that's political or that's uh, that's a uh, public figure. Blah, blah, blah. There are other AI generators that can do that sort of thing. So you can always go to another one. So the guardrails are there to keep you from doing it. So it's hungry for data. The more data that we give these large language models, the bigger they get, the more they can do, the more interesting things they can do. And I've, I've always said that that's one of the ways in which uh, computers or technology, computers can deduct things. Computers can solve things by pure computing force. We use intuition. We use thinking. We use decision-making skills. We use problem-solving skills that computers don't have. But what they do have is more data. I'll give you an example. You're sitting in your car, you're driving along. There's a slowdown. You don't know why there's a slowdown. You have no idea why there's a slowdown. But the computer knows everything about the route in front of you, behind you, all the people around you, every car, every single intersection, when the lights are changing, when the lights are not changing. It knows so much more than you do. So it can make a much better educated guess as to when you might be able to move forward. It has more information than you do. If you had a similar amount of information, you would as well. But AI makes decisions based on, not just AI, but computers in general, make decisions based on data. The more data they have, the more they can solve. But that's not the reason why I'm, I'm talking here. What I'm talking about is power. And this is the problem. If, if you go back a number, a number, a number, a number, a number of shows, when I was talking about innovation, and where we really need to innovate. And one of the spaces that we, sh we seriously need to innovate in is power. The generation of power, the storage of power, anything you have to do with power, because each and everything that we have been creating over the last little while, especially generative AI, chews up a ton of power. It needs energy, it needs electricity. It is ravenous for electricity. It is ravenous for power. And we need, and this is one of the things I find that's ironic, is that what we've done, on the other hand, on the flip side, we have reduced our ability to create new sources of energy because we're so worried about sustainability in the environment that we're shutting down all of these possible ways of gaining more energy when 
we could be looking at more ways to increase energy. So it's a balance, right? On the one hand, you have to create devices that require less energy, which is great. My laptop requires less energy than the laptop before that, and the laptop before that, and the laptop before that. That's great, but there's only a, there's a certain minimum amount of energy that's required. On the other hand, we need to create energy to, to match that level of energy that we have. And what's, what's ironic is that it's generative AI and the demand for generative AI and the power of generative AI that's driving us to go, we need more energy. So the AI itself might, as a side effect, force us into going back to all methods of energy generation. And I've had energy generation, energy folks on my podcast before, and they've all said the same thing. It's any and all. We have such an insatiable desire, an insatiable need, and especially with generative AI, we have such an ins insatiable need for more and more power that we need to go back to every single possible way that we have generated energy in the past and figure out ways to make it more efficient and to do more and to do new things that we've never done anymore before. This is why we need to go deep into nuclear fusion. We need to go back into fission and figure out ways of doing fission in a better way. Because, and we need to go back to the ice engine and do things in a better way. We need to go back to coal. We need to go back to each and everything that creates energy in any way, shape or form and go, how can we make this better? How can we make this work? How can we double, triple, 10 times the output of these things? And if it has to do with fossil fuels, sure, we need any and all. So the ironic thing is that the generative AI revolution is gonna drive a revolution in power generation. And the revolution in power generation, it's almost like the space race, right? When John F. Kennedy said, we're gonna be in space, we're gonna be on the moon before the end of this decade. It drove so much energy into all technology that would help us get to the moon. And if you say we're gonna to get to AGI by the end of this decade, that might be the same kind of energy that we need to drive all sorts of innovations in the power generation space. We need that vision to help drive us forward. And if you ask me, that's only a great thing. We all need power, and we could all use much more of it, even AI. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.